Father, we give you thanks. Ah, there is no other name like the name of Jesus. We bless you, Holy Ghost. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, to say his name shall be called Jesus. For he will save his people. He will save us from sin, from principalities, from powers. Just lift up your voice and call on that name, Jesus. Call on that name, Jesus. Call on that name, Jesus. The same book of Matthew chapter 1. Say his name shall be called Emmanuel. The Lord with us. Just lift up your voice and bless it. Karaba. Mande Mazu. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yorobas call him Onishe Yanu. The Lord that does wonders. Can you lift up your voice and bless him? Worship him. All the praise, all the glory that he deserves. Mande Mazu. Who are a faithful God? What an awesome God, <laughs> Emmanuel, Malegara, <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let us glorify Emmanuel. Let us glorify Emmanuel. 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 Let us glorify. Yeah, my got over Can somebody bless this God with me? Can somebody glorify Jesus? Lift up your voice and magnify him. Lift up your voice and glorify him. Lift up your voice and give him praise. The Bible says in Revelation 4 verse 10 and 11, they say the 24 elders in heaven, they bow before him who is seated on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Oh, he deserves to receive all the glory, 
for the honor of the power. Lift up your voice and appreciate him. If the elders in heaven can bless God. Oh my God, I wonder what you are doing this morning. Can you lift up your voice and appreciate him? Yeah, we bless you, Holy Ghost. We bless you, Holy Ghost. We bless you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, indeed, we appreciate you. We say what an awesome God you are. We say what a wonderful God. Father, indeed, you deserve our praise. Hey! Mashe Gabali Mazokiti. Holy Ghost, we say you deserve our glory, O God. Oh, Father, no one can share from your glory, Jehovah. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Father, we say, have your way, O God. Let your name and your name alone be glorified in this place today. Blessed be your holy name, O God. Lord, I hand myself over to you. I say, Father, have your way. I commit everyone at the sound of my voice in your hand, O God. Lord, I say, may they hear and receive double from your throne of grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I say, none of me and all of you. Lord, I step aside that you may step in. And minister to the heart and to the need of your people today. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Can you tell yourself this morning? Say, there is no limit with my God. Can you say that to yourself? My God is limitless. I say, there is no limit. I say, there is no limit. Can you speak to yourself? Minister to yourself. Be a prophet to yourself this morning. Say, I know without a shadow of doubt that there is no limit with Jehovah El Shaddai. There is no limit with Jehovah Adonai. There is no limit with Jehovah Elion. There is no limit with my God. He is the unchangeable changer. He is the way maker. He is the miracle working God. He is the promise keeping God. He is the light in the midst of the darkness. He is the one that passed the reshi. He is our hope in the midst of hopelessness. He is the only God. My God, my God, my God. Yegan Abose that died and rose again from death. He is the only God that the dead could not hold bound. Can you say to yourself one more time? There is no limit with my God. Yeah, I cannot hear you. Say there is no limit with the God that I serve. Say I don't know about your own God. But my own God is limitless. My own God is limitless. He is the impossibility God. He is the unchangeable changer. The miracle working God. My God. The God that speaks and every other speaker become a late comer. I say there is the God that I serve. And I've come to declare to the nation that this God that I serve is limitless. If you can believe me, I release the same unction upon you this morning. Unction to do the impossible. Unction to do the impossible. Unction for the grace, Mashi Gabuzi, to command the impossibility in your life. And they will hear the voice of the Lord. And the Lord can turn them around in the name of Jesus. He is the only one that holds the key of David. The key of death and life is in his hand. My God, there is no limit with this God. Oh my God, I bless your name. Can I hear you one more? and said there is no limit 
with my God. My message this morning is titled, No Limits with God. Praise the Lord. It is we that limit him. But this God that we serve, he said he can do exceedingly abundantly. He can do above and beyond what we can think and what we can imagine. That's why I've come to declare to somebody and to introduce to some. This God that can do all things, my God. This God that can do all things. I say he is my God. And I know he's also your God if you can believe in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, now to him who is able to do immeasurably. I'm reading an IV. He's able to do the impossible. He's able to break every limit. He's able to command the storm and the storm can be still. He said now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, my God, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Ah, Mashi Gabozi, according to the power that worketh in us. The power that he released upon us. He said, if you have faith as little as mustard seed, you can command this mountain to move, and the mountain will obey and respect your voice. He's able to do immeasurably. He's able to do more than what you expect. He's able to preserve you in the midst of pandemic. He's able to make way when there is no way. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask. He can do more than you are asking him. That means you can ask him for more. Are you hearing me this morning? That means we can do what we can ask God for more. Because he's able to do more than you ask. Solomon asked him for wisdom. He went beyond wisdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Hannah asked him for a child, but he gave him more than Samuel. Are you hearing me? He's God that can do more than we think. More than we can imagine. We are the one that is holding him off. Praise the name of the Lord. We are the one that is hindering the move of God in our life. The Bible in Isaiah 59, which we talk about all the time, says the hand of the Lord is not too short. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That he cannot reach us. That's why we know that he can do beyond the limits. When the Lord gives me a word, I, I, I go back and I study, I dig deep into that word. I have the Lord spoke to my ear about two weeks ago, towards the end of the month of August. Said, I'm breaking limit. I don't know if any of you remember. I'm breaking limit. And I went digging. I said, God, where have I limited you? I love the song that says, I have made you too small in my heart. Oh, Lord, forgive me. We have made him too small. But he is telling me now to tell you that he's a limitless God. He's a limitless God. The Bible said he seated up in heaven. And he made the earth his first too. That's how big he is. There's a song that we sing in Igbo. It depends on you. How big is your God? 
It is you. It is you. You are the one that puts limit on him. He said his hand is not too short. His ear is not deaf. That he cannot hear. He's not a deaf God. He's God that has ear. And he can hear. We cannot afford to put limit on God anymore. We are the one holding him down. We are the one holding him down. That's why he told Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3. My God. When, when the Lord told Moses what to do, he said, go to Egypt and liberate my people from bondage because their cry have come to me. Moses began to wonder, how can I do that? Will they believe me? Is it not the same Pharaoh that know who I am? I say some people will die because of familiarity. They know too much. See too much. See finish. Say, ah, is it not me? Me, Moses, that is a stomacher. That Pharaoh don't see finish. How will he believe me? Even the Israelites, how will they even believe that you sent me? Because as far as I know, the last time I knew, they took me as one of the priests of Egypt, isn't it? Say, so how will they even believe me? The Bible says here in Exodus 3, if you start reading from verse 11, he says, he said, but Moses said to God, who I am, that I should go to Pharaoh. He limited himself. When David located Mesibophet, praise the Lord. When he located Mesibophet, the Bible told us there, he did not, he was, he was the one that went out looking for him. When he finally found him, he said, who am I? A dead dog like me, how can I eat from the king's table? We limit ourselves too much. But the Lord has sent me this morning to tell you to take the limit off. And let God be God. I'm learning to do the same. And I'm telling you to do the same. When you limit yourself, you are limiting God. When you limit yourself, you are limiting God. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to go to the book of Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 30 to 37. When you get a chance, you can finish the book of Exodus chapter 3. How Moses said, ah, how can? We don't even believe what I'm saying. He said, but who will I tell them that sent me? As at that time, he didn't know who actually this God is. Because if he knew who is giving him the authority to go, he wouldn't even ask that question. A lot of us, we limit him because we don't know him. That means we need to dig deep to know who this God is. There's a song that we sing in Igbo. You know what the song means? He said the God that I'm, that, that I'm in his court is a big God. The God that is shedding me is a big God. The one that is fighting my battle is a big God. Nobody can compete with him. So we need to get to know this God. Know him for yourself. My God. Sometimes we misuse God because we don't understand him. Sometimes we underrate him. Because we don't understand him. He told, he said, Moses, tell them that I am that I am. Hey, hey, that means whatever you call me in the land of Egypt, that's what I am. If you tell them that I'm a healer, I will heal. If you tell them that I answer by fire, you will see the fire descend. Say, wherever you call me, that's what I am. That's our limitation. Are you hearing me?
Because what are you calling this God? What are you calling him? What are you calling him? Say, whatever you call me, that's what I am. I am that I am. I am who you say I am. I've seen God move, I'm telling you. I've seen God move. It depends on what you call him. If you call him the giver of life, he will give you life in abundance. If you call him a promise keeper, a covenant keeping God, he will keep every covenant. It depends on you. He's life giver. He's life changer. His name is Jehovah. He's a covenant keeping God. It depends on what we call him. He said, Moses, whatever you tell Pharaoh that I am, that I am. I am the God that he doesn't know. I am not like all those gods with little g in the land. I think in the land of Egypt, they have all kinds of God. All kinds. But this is only one God that supersedes every other God. Are you hearing me this morning? So it depends on what you call him. It's whatever you call him. If you call him fruitful, he makes you fruitful. So it depends on us. It depends on us. It depends on you. Our prosperity, our life, how we do in life depend on us and God. Verse 14, he said, God said to Moses, I am, I am. This is what you are to say to Israel. Say to the Israelite, I am, has sent me to you. Because the Israelites will not believe you if you go there on your own. Because the last time they knew, you were one of the prince of Egypt. Praise the Lord. The last time Pharaoh knew, you were that baby that they pulled from the river. Say, but when you get there, let them know that you have the backing of Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Adonai. Say, let them know whose backing you have. Do we know the backing of who that we have? Do we know who that we are, his ambassador on earth? I'm not alone. Jesus is with me. That's why every limit is broken. That's why I cannot stop myself. And I cannot allow any man to stop me. That's why I walk with my shoulder high. That's why when the door opens, I walk in with boldness. That's why when I open my mouth, I speak with authority. Because I know who has sent me. May the Lord open our eyes to know whose warriors we are. In the mighty name of Jesus. Follow me to the book of Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read 30 to 37. Luke chapter 1, 30 to 37. There is no limit with my God. No limit with God. No limit with God. He said, and the angel said unto her, fear not, my God. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Fear not. Here is the lion of the tribe of Judea. He said, fear not. May the Lord open our eyes to know the God, that true God that we serve. He said, and behold, thou shalt conceive in your womb and bring forth a son. And he shall, we shall call what his name? Jesus. Thou shalt conceive, and how will I conceive? Because he's an impossible God. How 
will I conceive when I know no man? Because God is an impossible God. He said the host of heaven, the angel of the most high will envelop you. And there will be an immaculate conception. Hey, he breaks limits. He breaks limits. When you look at it medically, it's impossible. That's why he's God. That's why he's God. If we can do it, it's no longer a miracle. Praise the Lord. If, if the Lord had told him, don't worry, Joseph will marry you rapidly. Immediately, right now. And then by tomorrow you'll be pregnant. It's no longer a miracle. Praise the Lord. That's why he allowed John, uh, not John, that's why he allowed Lazarus in John chapter 11 to die and be buried for four days so that nobody will say, but he, maybe he was in coma because he was buried. If you look at it medically, except God's divine intervention, Nobody can stay more than five minutes without oxygen and still without, having, without, without being brain dead. Praise the Lord. So the Lord made sure that he died. And he did not even allow him to just, he did not show up immediately, but he waited. So that the, the hope of men can, ex, you know, their, their, their strength can be exhausted. They buried him. He didn't show up that day. Maybe somebody will say, oh, they just buried him, you know, there's still a chance for him to wake up. He waited after four days. Normally by that time, he should have exploded, he should have been smelling by that time. That's what the sister Mary said. Said, but Lord, if we open that, if we roll away the stone, we're going to be in trouble. Because by now he's already stinky. But the Lord broke that limit. Hey, with man, he's stinky. But with God, my God, he's not. That's where God comes in. That's where he comes in. That's where Jehovah comes in. He said, with man, can we try and let God be God? Let's not limit him. Let's not limit him. Take a step. The Bible says in that Exodus chapter 3, after question asking God, how will they believe me? How will this happen? How will that happen? How did that happen? The Lord, not knowing that he already, the staff in his hand is already his weapon. The Lord did not say, just go away. Say, throw the staff down. <laughs> Let's see if you will just obey God. All we need to do is to obey him. Moses had to do something. Say, throw it down. Can we lay it down on God's feet? That thing that you think that is impossible... That God that spoke to me and said that he is going to break limit. He's asking you to lay it at the altar. Lay it at the altar. Let me see. If you will remain the same. Lay it at the altar. Let me see. If I'm no longer God. He to say, throw it down. He, threw, he said, pick it back up. Praise the Lord. He is the resurrection. He is the life. Even if that situation is already dead like Lazarus, he's able to call it forth like he called Lazarus forth. Can we learn to trust this God? Can we learn to remove the limit from him? Can we learn to give him the chance to do what he ought to do? A lot of times our problem lingers. Because already we have made up our mind, you know what, well, let me just live this way. You know, this is normal. 
But the law, the law of the land said, who made those that made the law of the land? Is it not God in heaven? That said he has the heart of a king that said channel of water in his hand. That means the Lord made those that made the law. He's able to turn their hearts in our favor. He's able to cause them to change the law to favor us. He's the one that tells the ocean how far it will go. Hey! He commanded the storm and the storm was still. The apostles were in amazement. They said, what matter of man is this? Even the wave and the sea, they obey him. So if the wave and the sea can obey God, why won't your situation bow before the Lord? Every knee we bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Holy Ghost, every knee we bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is my God. Hey! I said barrenness will bow. Just by the mention of the name of Jesus. Affliction will bow. Poverty will bow in the name of Jesus. Joblessness we bow in the name of Jesus. Sickness and infirmity. The spirit behind cancer we bow by the mention of the name of Jesus. The spirit of Mashigabozi. The spirit behind stroke we bow by the mention of the name of Jesus. My God, you are an awesome God. It is the only name, my God, Jesus, that the enemy hears and begins to pick raise, my God. Hey, Mashigaba. There is no name. Eli masiga baloge de bozi. Rege masiga bali mazuge de gede mazega bo. Lege de moziga bo zagada bo. As long as that thing have name, they will bow. As long as they have name. Beloved, sickness is a name. Affliction is a name. Barrenness is a name. Poverty is a name. Rise and fall is a name. Whatever it is called, as long as it has a name, I have come to declare, if you can believe me at this minute, that they will bow before my maker in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hey, Mashega Bozege. Say you shall call him Jesus. As if me and the choir people, we kind of match it up. They didn't know what my message is today. But this is the spirit of God. Yeah, yeah. That like God is up to something, isn't it? Yeah. May the Lord open your eyes to see what the Lord is doing. Yeah. Lord, whatever you are doing in this season... Don't do it without me. The Lord is doing something great. He's doing something marvelous. And I say you will not be left behind. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I say whatsoever you are doing in this wonderful season, oh God. Father, may we not be left behind in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, do it, O God, and be glorified. He said he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. Hey! He is the son of the highest. I mean, he's the highest of the highest. He's the son of the highest. That means nothing can be impossible with him. He seated up in heaven and he made the earth his footstool. Ah, Yagabose. He made 
make the principalities and powers his footstool. He make the trouble that you are going through. He for my God, my God, my God. I say whatever the limitation may be, I throw them on the ground. I say you march on them and get to your next level in the name of Jesus. I say whatever I I say there shall be a stepping stool for you to get to where the Lord wants to see you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Said, and the Lord God shall give him, give unto him the throne of his father, David. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Yea, Rabba Sugede. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. That's why he called the limitless God. The God that have no limit because his kingdom has no end. He's endless. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but every beat of my word, I will see it come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. Then Mary said unto the angel, how shall this be? <laughs> that is our problem as individuals. We allow self to come in. I do that sometimes too. Because I'm not Holy Spirit. I'm not Jesus. I do that sometimes. We allow me to come in. Oh, how can that be? Begin to wonder. Your mind can begin to go haywire. But they said this and said that. But people that did it last year, they weren't successful. But they said this one happened and that one happened. My God, I've seen God move. I've seen him do the impossible. I've seen God cause a barren woman, barrenness of 14 years, come up with two bouncing baby boys at the same time to shut the mouth of the devil up. I've seen God, barrenness of oh my god the woman was 57 years old i'm telling this just happened this year it just happened this year in the midst of the pandemic god is doing miracle she had two babies two girls i know them personally so i'm telling you what i know so there's nothing god can do god cannot do age is not a limit age is not a barrier Distance is not a barrier. He said in Psalm 107 verse 20, can we stop limiting God? He said he sent forth his word. And his word, he let them. He made the word of his messenger a flaming fire. He's God all by himself. He told Zerubbabel in, in, in Zechariah chapter 4, he said, what is that mountain before you, O Zerubbabel? What is that mountain before you? He said, it shall be turned to a... I'm going to level it. And I'm going to release grace upon you to make it possible. All we need to be asking God when we don't know what to say. Don't even say anything. When you don't know what to say, don't say nothing. Just ask God for grace. Father, so give me grace and to understand this. There are sometimes you hear God say, like, God, this is too much. Oh. And when you say it's too much, it will become too much. Like the story of Elizabeth. During the, uh, uh, the birth of John the Baptist. The father doubted. Zachariah doubted. And what did God do? He shut him up. If I allow this man to keep talking, there will be a miscarriage. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So that's what a lot of times we are the one holding the hand of God. We are the one holding him. May the Lord give us understanding. May we get grace. So we can remove the limits. Uh -huh. 
The Lord wants us to do what? Take off the limit that you've put in on him. I was saying our part. Because the Bible is very clear. He said our righteousness is of him. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The blood of Jesus is forever available to purify us from every sin and judgment of the wicked. But sometimes our brain needs to be washed by the blood of Jesus. So we can stop thinking too much. Sometimes we think too much. The more you think about a particular thing, the more it becomes impossible. We think too much sometimes. But the doctor said, but the nurse said, when the doctor and nurse become God, you begin to think, and you know what? That's where the devil gets fat. Begin to think about those things. The devil will hold on to it and begin to minister his wickedness upon our lives. May that devil go to hell where he belongs. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can we learn not to think too much? Don't think too much. Let God, hand it to God. How do God know that you handed it to him when you stop worrying about it? The angel told Mary in that Luke chapter 1 verse 30, he said, and the angel said unto Mary, fear not. When you still remember that thing and you are afraid, that means you have not handed it to God yet. Though. When you hand it to him, you trust him. We are human beings. I know sometimes our hope, when, that's when, when that human nature stays there, get deep behind. Even Jesus had to rebuke the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and the devil know the easiest way to get him to stumble is to offer him some food. Because he know the right way. It's like a man that just got delivered from drunkenness. It's me and bottle forever. God just delivered you. And all the friends that you have, they are all drunkard like you. And you still keep that company. That's trouble now. That's trouble. So let's learn to clean our mind. When you hand it to God, leave it alone. That's why I love the word of God. Anxiety, fear, does not prosper before God. They don't. They don't have place in God at all. They don't have place. There's no way to justify them. Say, ah, but I'm human being now. Yeah, he know that you are human being now. You, he know already that you are a human being. And he already made a way out for you. If you look at the book of Matthew chapter 6, if you start reading from verse 25, I'm not going to read it. Read from there till 34. He tells you, say, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. You keep reading and keep reading. The only thing the Lord wants you to worry about is in verse 33 and 34. Are you hearing me? That time you used to bother yourself of things that you think God has not done. That we just, it's just us thinking that God has not done it. He said, even before that prayer point, comes out from your mouth, the answer is already there. The answer is already there. The only thing the Lord wants us to worry about as children of God is here in 33 and 34. He said, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you as well. That's all he wants you to worry about. How do I save souls? How do I bring people to the kingdom of God? How do I get on my, my unsaved family members to become safe? How do I get the gospel to get to the ends of the earth? So that Christ can finally come. That should be our main worry. 
take off the limit from the Lord. Even that one that he said you should worry about. He already given you the power and the authority, the grace. That's what he said. I didn't say that. Some, uh, uh, Matthew 28 from verse 16 to 20. He already gave you the grace, the power to even do that little that he wants you to focus on. A lot of people end up with high blood pressure. I'm telling you, throughout this pandemic, all kinds of sickness have sprung up here and there. Because some of us have been really, really trying to do the work of God for him. You're trying to be the one to, you know, to preserve yourself. Making sure that you don't get coronavirus. You want to be the one to preserve your job. Make sure that the bills in the house is paid. I'm telling you, if any of us have not learned in this season, that means there is, you know, we will never learn. That we are nothing but dust. We are nothing. I'm telling you, a normal human being, a normal man or woman in America, is only one paycheck that is separating them from sleeping under the bridge. Only one paycheck. It's only one paycheck. I don't care how much you think you've saved in your account. This country is built in a way that no matter how much you make, they think they are wiser than God. Everything you make in this country, go back to them. That means you miss one paycheck, you are in trouble. But God prays up. A lot of us here, that they didn't even have a job since March till now. Then ask yourself, how did it happen? Except God. Except God. But God. May God help us. Matthew 28 from 16 to 20. We're still going to really work on this sermon. I, I, I don't think I'm going to finish it today. Praise the Lord. Say, so then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. Put some, they worshipped him, but some doubted. The demonic spirit of doubt. They doubted. He said, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And he's transferring it to me and he already transferred it to us. Because that's why he had to go. Say, if I don't go, those of you that have been, that have been joining the Zoom Bible studies on Tuesdays, We've been dealing on the person of the Holy Spirit. Said, if I don't go, the comforter will not come. The empowerment will not be there. The grace to move mountain by you will not be there. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say we should go and sit and warm the bench all the time. Say, go, 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 go. Where are you going? That's, where, that's what the Lord wants us to focus on. Focus on going and making disciples. Let that discipleship start from your own Jerusalem, which is your home. Charity begins at home. How many of your family members that are still there without being saved? Are you reaching out to them? Are you talking to them? Say, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, and teaching them to obey everything. Ah, I have commanded you. Teaching them to obey what you obey. Don't teach them to obey, to do what you are not doing. You teach them to obey what you obey. Not do as I say but don't do as I do. Praise the name of the Lord. 
My older daughter, sometimes when I start, when my human nature I, you know, steps in, I start complaining. Oh, this and this happened. That and that happened. She will remember. But mommy, you said the other day in church. <laughs> he said, but you said the other day. They know. Nobody will just, you better shut up your mouth. <laughs> Apostle Paul says, as I follow Christ, follow me. Teaching them to obey what you obey. Teaching them to do what you do. Teaching them to love Lord without reservation. Said, and surely I am with you. That's where I'm going. I'm with you. Not sometimes, but always. Even to the end of the age. I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. Amen. I'm with you. May the Lord open our eyes. Give us understanding to know him that have brought us this far. Know who Jehovah Ebenezer is. The Lord that have brought us this far. If he, do, if he did it then, he would do it again. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be? Can we stop asking God, How can this be? Can we stop doing that? When he speaks, when he gives you a vision, he makes provision. When the Lord speaks, he has a way out. I've learned to stop asking him, How will this be? And even if I ask, I'm asking to know. I'm asking because I need to know. I want, I, want, I, I want knowledge. I need to know what to work on to start getting ready for this thing that you want me to do. I'm not asking him out of doubt. But a lot of us, we ask out of doubt. Oh, this is impossible. But I've seen God move. I've seen God move. I have a sister that is actually here with me. There was a year I heard she was, for me, even me, it took God for me to even believe her. She trusts God. She said, my family must come to America this year. She, I'm telling you, we were here having crossover service. 31st night, her family walked in from this door. I know some of you know who I'm talking about. 31st night. That means that thing that she asked God, believing God and trusting God. God saw to it that, that that year did not roll over forward without them being here. They walked in here before we start saying Happy New Year. Isn't God awesome? We just have to trust Him. We have to trust Him. And if you know what I know, even her herself was impossible, but God makes it possible. And then, that wasn't enough. She pressed forward. Just me and my daughter is not good enough. My husband and the, and, and the other two boys have to be here. She pressed forward. Not even looking at me with my little faith. Say, Pastor, I'm trusting God. Just believe God with me. Just believe God with me. And I'm telling you, God can move mountains. God can do anything that we believe. That's why he took Abraham out in Genesis 15. He said, look up. If you can count the number of the stars in the air. He said, that's how numerous your seed will be. You know why? Because he perceived a little bit of doubt in Abraham. I've been waiting for this long. How am I sure that it's going to come to pass? He had to take him out. The same stars that Abraham could not count. The Lord said that he knew those stars by name. Are you hearing me? He knew them by name. But somebody could not even count. 
But he, the Lord, know them by name. He said the hairs on your head. That he know how many they are. The hair that you yourself that is carrying the hair don't even know how many hair you have. But the Lord said, I know. I have tattooed you in the palm of my hand. That is how precious you are to him. He said, you are the apple of my eyes. That's how precious you are to the Lord. Can we learn to trust this God for the impossible? I've learned to trust him. I've learned to trust him. I've learned to trust him. We are all a work in progress. But you need to make up your mind to keep progressing. Are you hearing me? Make up your mind to keep moving forward. Backward never. But forward forever and ever. Make up your mind and tell God, as long as I have the breath of life, I will keep moving forward. Daddy preached a message today that he titled The Wonders of His Breath. The wonders of the breath of God. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 150 verse 6, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. There is wonder. That you are breathing is wonder. Because none of us can give ourselves a breath of life. The only thing that separates us from those that are dead is that breath that we still have in us. That's what separates us. That's what separates us. There's nothing God has not done for us. So that God that has done it then can do it again. I've learned to go back to memory lane in my life. When it looks like it's difficult, I go back, I say, um, this and this happened. Like David did. Can we learn to trust God? Everything around David was, was obviously impossibilities that surrounded him. Saul himself was an instrument of the enemy. He put all the gadgets on him. To weigh him down actually. Praise the Lord. It sounds funny, but that's what it is. Within Saul, he's doing him a favor. He's trying to preserve him. He's trying to preserve him. But that's the lie from the pit of hell. To weigh him down. Everything around David was was clearly showcasing impossible. His siblings said, look at this little boy. You better go back and take care of the sheep. Because that's what you know to do. Then they gave him the resume of Goliath. Say he been a warrior from birth. And when you look at him, he's tall and huge. He know how to handle the AK-49. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Or AK-47. He know how to handle it. He know how to do his own Obunigwe. Praise the Lord. You don't know what Obunigwe is. That's our own Abamed bomb in Biafra land. Our own Abamed bomb. He know how to make his own Obunigwe. You better be careful. Obunigwe means he kills in multitude. And it was Nigerian made up. So I don't know what happened to us. Praise the Lord. They gave him, by the time he looked at the resume of Goliath, he should have just turned around and just go. But he also brought out the resume of his, of his God. That's what we need to do to shut the enemy up. Don't allow him to put you down. Do you know who is backing me? He said that same God gave me the strength to kill a lion. So who is Goliath compared to a lion? 
He gave me the strength to kill a bear. He said, not by my power, not by my mind. Say, you come against me with your weapon. He said, when I come against you, by the name, and oh my God, by the name of Jesus. He says, who's warrior? You've been killing. That I've come to put an end to that nonsense. And I'm telling you, it worked. Let's learn to go back to memory lane. And pull the limit out. Let's not allow the enemy to hold us down anymore. He's very good in throwing your weakness before you. Throw his laziness before him. He's nothing but a lazy devil. Pride in the highest order. Ungrateful. Throw it before him. Tell him how he was thrown down from heaven. And how he's heading to hell with that bus stop. We need to let him know. Don't allow him to put you down. Enough is enough. You know, when the Lord speaks to us, he has a reason. For the Lord to tell me I will break, that means he knows I've been putting limits. I've been the one limiting him. And I'm telling you, it's not just for me. Anointing flows from the head. And it doesn't stop in the head. It rolls down. Praise the Lord. So if you've been limiting God, it's time for you to take it off. It's time for you to break that edge and take it off. And I'm going to tell you something. There is no blessing that we get in life that does not have a limitation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is no blessing. The Israelites in Joshua chapter 6, they got to where their blessing was. But there was a wall of Jericho that surrounded it. Praise the name of the Lord. The limitation between David and the blessing that follows the person that killed Goliath is Goliath. So there's always a limitation. Everything that we have in life, I can use me as an example. I was telling somebody, I said, you know, I, I, I came to a point, I came to my lowest point in life. I, can't even, I couldn't even buy my daughter's eighth grade dance clothes. How much? Hundred dollars. I couldn't even buy. And I'm telling you the truth. But you know why God did that? So that no one will take the glory when he's done with what he wants to do. So everything that we do in life has a limitation. There's something that is limiting it. And we have to break it to get there. Fear is a limitation to our success. I was telling somebody, I said, you know, when you come to my office now, you go from room to room. You're wondering, how did this happen? But God made sure that we didn't even have, if I tell you how much, to put license. It wasn't a lot of money. Less than 3000 we didn't, we didn't have it. That's the same office that is paying people now. But the Lord made sure. He wants to see if I will give up. When they tell you what it takes to start a home health, you'll be like, wow, and he didn't even have money to put license? I'm serious. Then how will you get money to do the rest? But I'm going to, when the Lord gives you vision, he made provision. Not knowing that the Lord have positioned the right people at the right places, waiting for me to just make a move. Just take the step, because they are all waiting. And I'm telling you, as I go, he said what? He said, the Bible made it clear. He said, he will give us our daily bread. When the Lord gave the Israelites manna, 
He said, take as much as you can eat now. Don't save it for tomorrow. That means as you are going. He's making provision for what you need. But he wants you to take a step. He wants you to take a step. My niece is here. She will tell you that I'm, everything I'm saying here is telling you. Let's not allow anything to limit us. Learn to hold on to God. Let's learn to hold on to God. Let's learn to hold on to who? To God. Don't hold on to your bank account. Don't depend on anybody. I'm going to tell you, the people that God used to restore my life were people that I least expected that would do anything for me. I didn't even ask. Some just overheard. Oh, Oh, Jesse, did you say, were you saying this and that? I said, yeah. He said, okay, I have this and that. And I'm, I'm not joking. I am not joking. God knows. He knows. He knows your name. I love that song. He knows your weak points. We're going to have to dig deeper in this world. We're not going to stop here. Can we all rise? Let's rise because of time. We'll continue. Our God is a faithful God. As a church, we need to learn. I'm telling you, I've seen God move. So I've learned to trust him. I've learned to trust him. Some of you watching us, you think that this church that you see that look like this, that's how it was about 10 years ago. No. And, we, and I said, church, we, did, we, we didn't have what it takes to make it what it is. No jokes. We did not have. That's why sometimes I share our special number, our praise and worship from eight, ten years ago. Eight, ten years ago, it was like Lodiba. Yes, so. And we didn't have what it takes to make it a promised land. We did not. You are, you are here, so you understand. If you don't get it, go talk to the king court. He will break it down. I'm not joking. There was a point that we couldn't even pay the mortgage. We'll fight with the bank. I'm not joking. But see how far. But we refuse to stop. That's what the Lord is telling us to do. I don't know where you are hitting. It's like you are hitting dead end. The Lord is saying, keep hitting on it. Don't let go. Keep hitting on it. Don't let go. That limit the Lord will break in the name of Jesus. Talk to the Lord this morning. Say, Father, help me. I don't know what the doctors have said to you. But I've come to tell you that doctors are just mere men. They are not God. They are men. I thought they said by now, Corona would have killed everybody. But we are still here. That means they are not man. They are God. God. They are just mere men. They are not God. So they go by statistic. They go by what they think is, you know, uh, they said this and they said that. They look at the sky. Look at the moon. But God is the one that created the star and the moon. He, he created even them. It's like what they are doing is Niger bet. Tom bum tom bum. They are not even sure. Because after everything, they are not sure. Because if they are sure, wouldn't all have been here? The Lord kept us. He preserved us. Can you talk to this God? I don't know that thing in your life. 
that you have come to the point of saying, you know what, let it be. Let it be, it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. Talk to the Lord about it. Talk to him about it, it's not okay. It's only the plan of God that will come to pass in your life. If it's not in God's plan, it's not okay. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, do what only you, the Lord, can do. Do what only you, the Lord, can do. Do what only you, the Lord, can do. Talk to the Lord, beloved, talk to him. Lay those things before the altar. Lay it before the altar. Lay it before the altar. Holy Ghost, reach out to your people, Lord. Blessed be your name, O God. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Mm, I want us to pray. This is one of the prayers that Daddy prayed this morning. I want you to ask, say, Father, breathe upon me. Breathe upon me and give me the grace to break limits. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Father, breathe upon every dead thing in my life. Every day, my Father, breathe upon them, O oh God. Breathe upon your children. Breathe upon me, O oh God. And give me the grace. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, one more time, Lord, we say thank you. We bless you, Holy Spirit. We adore you, the Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords. The Lord that maketh way where there seems to be no way. Ah. The preserver of Israel. Father, preserve your people, Lord. Father, keep building your wall of protection round about us, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare upon your people, upon your church. I say they will not die, they will live. To showcase your goodness in this land of the living in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare upon them. I say they will not just live, but they will fulfill destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, we bless you. Blessed be your holy name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to just take a quick announcement before we share the grace. Praise the Lord. Just a quick announcement. Our weekly services have not changed. It's still on Zoom. Praise the Lord. Except the Bible, the prayer meeting on Thursdays that is here in the church. And the reason being that it's not a lot of us that comes for the prayer meeting. But our Bible studies on Tuesdays, our digging deep is online on Zoom. And by God's grace, uh, you know, we will always uh, share the link so that you can join. You know, you can join. It's on Tuesdays from two, uh, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. I know a lot of us, sometimes we have a lot of questions to ask. So we, the, the earlier you log in, the better, so we don't have to be going back to repeat what, what we've already said. So when we say it's 7 p.m., the Lord is there before 7 wedding. So let's try and make it on time. Praise the Lord. Then another Bible study is on Fridays. It's mainly for the women, but the men are welcome to join. It's also on Zoom, 